Charlie Hooper, most commonly known for charisma on command, has decided to throw out his ethical views on not eating animals and go back to eating meat. In this video, we're going to explore his reasons for doing so and see if he's fallen into the spiritual ex-vegan trap. Charlie was never vegan because he still ate fish, but he spoke about animal rights compassionately and articulately and inspired many people to go vegan. When I first started watching his podcast in 2019, I was a proud meat eater, but his arguments swayed me to take animal ethics seriously. Throughout this video, we're going to explore creativity, narcissism, and connection. Let's start with what happened. For those of you who've been watching the podcast, you know I've been a pescatarian for many years at this point, but I actually started eating meat uh, about two months ago, and I wanted to share why. It's a bit of a story, because it didn't. I didn't plan to start eating meat. I actually this started with a psychedelic journey. My journey. 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 Everybody has their journey. 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 I was. I was wanting to connect with my creativity again, and uh, a lot of interesting things happened in this particular journey. But it was the last third of it that I really had made contact with that part of myself. Basically, he talked to his creativity during this trip, and his creativity took the form of a woman. Now, this may sound crazy to someone who's not done psychedelics, but it is a common an experience where you often are able to contact different parts of yourself that you can't contact in your daily life. So this divine, feminine, creative energy told him essentially that he was using her in codependent, egoic ways. And so I said, okay, what can I do? What can I offer? What can I give you? And one of the things it's like was crying, like, you don't even feed me. And my relationship with food has always been one of fuel and rules. So I asked, what do you want to do? What would you like to eat? And I was, you know, hoping to hear more of what already you've made okay. And it was very clear. It was like, I want steak. In trying to forge this relationship with this part of me, I said, okay. And I went out and the next night when I was feeling up to it, I got steak. His creativity tells him that she wants steak, which makes the rational, logical part of Charlie uncomfortable because of a concern for harming animals. Charlie says he felt stained as a child due to some trauma. So that inspired him to want to become a good person to hide the monster at his core. I'm trying to engage in a project of shifting the seed of morality to this rule-based morality that I've been cultivating since I was a philosophy major in college and then even before that when I was a kid mm -hmm. to a heart-based morality, a trust in myself. And that's very scary because when my heart or my gut tells me to do something that contradicts what the rules say, that makes me frightened that I will just become a monster. His desire to not eat animals in the first place came from this fear-based sense as well. Even the question that got me into not eating animals was not a heartfelt connection. It was, how do I know that I wouldn't be a slave owner? Instead of having compassion for animals, he wanted to be better than those around him. He then talks about suffering and how we're all responsible for it and how we should all be grateful for the connection that we have to that suffering. And so I f have felt since then when I started eating, um, the results have been much deeper sense of gratitude uh, around food, particularly and on the occasions that I've had steak, it's been not overwhelming, but nearly overwhelming. <laughs> I'm at the restaurant and I'm like having a hard time keeping it together because I feel unworthy of it. Yet here I am. And that that then makes me go, you are being called to show up in a much bigger way. And since he started eating steak, his creativity has come back. He does express a desire to feel more connected to animals and hasn't ruled out not eating them in the future. All right, so now let's get into my analysis. We're going to start with creativity. I understand Charlie's desire to be more creative and have it to come from a genuine place, but I obviously disagree with how he's going about it. This should go without saying, but there's nothing in animal flesh that makes you more creative. When studies have been done about how food can fuel creativity, there is some evidence that fruits and vegetables are the way to go. The only animal product that could help your creativity is fish, which Charlie was already eating. And I'll make a note that that's not because of the fish, that's because of the omega-3s, which you can get from algae oil, seaweed, and many nuts and seeds. So there's no reason to be 
eating animal products for creativity at all. I wish that Charlie had tried to jumpstart his creativity in other ways besides going straight to eating animals. Some ways we can help our creativity is to challenge ourselves, to get out of our comfort zones, and to make progress toward goals that are meaningful to us. Charlie rarely leaves his house, doesn't travel, and makes charisma-related content that he's no longer interested in. Of course his creativity has suffered, and it's not because he wasn't eating steak. If he's felt more creative since eating animals again, it's probably because he's switched up his routine and taken some of that external pressure to be a good person off of himself. When the muse told him to savor his food, why didn't he savor plant-based food? There are plenty of vegan steak options from juicy marbles to meaty. Charlie could have tried cooking a new dish or going to a, an amazing vegan restaurant. There are plenty of those in LA. I'm betting that Charlie didn't try any of these options, and I wish he had done that to see if that would satisfy his muse. What if his muse told him to eat a human or his dog? Would he do that? I'm willing to bet that he wouldn't. The idea that a human's creativity is more important than animals' lives is unfair to the animals. The whole time Charlie was talking about his decision to eat animals again, I felt a strong sense of narcissism emitting from him. Even going back to his decision to not eat animals in the first place. I used to think that meat eaters were full of shit when they said that people go vegan just to be better than other people, but Charlie is proving them right. He admits that his morality came from a desire to be better than and that he was overly concerned with being a good person. When I went vegan, and I think most people watching will relate to this, I didn't do it to be better than anyone else. I did it because I didn't want to be part of the atrocity that's happening to animals. It came from realizing that I'm not better than anyone else and that my desires should not supersede an animal's right to bodily autonomy. Charlie's decision to consume animals shows that he does think he's better than them. His creativity and taste pleasures are more important than their entire existence. His intuition is better than morality. There's a strong overlap between people interested in spirituality and narcissism. I found this awesome article that talks about spirituality and narcissism, and it makes the point that by shifting their identities onto the universe, narcissistic people are able to skirt accountability and create the illusion of awakened superiority. Narcissistic people love new age spiritual practices because they provide an unquestionable place to hide. We can see this when Charlie talks about how he's destined for something greater. It sounds like an ego-based delusion of grandeur, a spiritual attempt to, once again, be better than everyone else. One of my biggest issues with these spiritual ex-vegans is that whenever people question them, we're told that we just don't get it. We're not as in tune with the universe or our ego is keeping us in a box. Maybe if I did more mushrooms, I'd understand why it's okay to torture animals just because you want to. It's unfortunate that this is so common, but I think a lot of these spiritual types are attracted to veganism in the first place, so it makes sense that they would abandon veganism in the name of spiritual growth. At the end of the day, they're just using an internal experience to justify creating external harm. One of the common themes throughout Charlie's explanation was of connection and gratitude. He felt disconnected from his creativity, so he's eating animals to get that connection back. He felt disconnected from the world's suffering, so he's using animal consumption to experience it fully. This is common among spiritual ex-vegans who say that consuming animals again has somehow allowed them to connect more fully to the universe. I understand why this idea is appealing, and there is something inherently disconnected about being vegan. In most cases, you're going against your culture, your friends, and even your family. It can feel isolating at times. But what I found is that beneath that, there's a greater sense of connection. Since going vegan, I feel more connected to the animals all around me. I used to walk by birds without even looking at them, but now I can look into their eyes and appreciate their inherent value, independent of whether or not they give me what I want. If you truly want to understand suffering, then go experience suffering. Don't pay for someone else to go through it. When you eat animals, you're reducing that animal's entire existence to minutes of pleasure for you. You're not appreciating their inherent beauty. You're selfishly using them to satisfy your desires. You can feel grateful for what they provided you, but that gratitude doesn't make taking their life moral. That is, once again, prioritizing your feelings over their 
lives. There are many ways to feel gratitude. You can keep a gratitude journal, do breath work, tell someone that you love and appreciate them, or you could even feel grateful for your plant-based food. Your gratitude does not change the reality for these animals. They were forced into a slaughterhouse where they trembled in fear. They were hung upside down and had their throat slit. Saying that you're grateful for violently taking their life is an insult to the animal. Spirituality, as I understand it, does involve coming to terms with the suffering in our world. It does involve gratitude and recognizing that everything, the good and the bad, comes from the same oneness. But that understanding does not require us to cause extra suffering when we don't need to. I hate when meat eaters paint vegans as simpletons who don't understand that we all create harm. None of us think that we're not creating any harm, but we are aware that just because we create some harm doesn't give us the right to violate animals' bodily autonomy when we don't need to. We would never say that we're increasing our capacity to understand suffering by paying for sex trafficking, so why is it okay to say these things about animals? We can empathize with the cow in the slaughterhouse without paying for her to be there. Charlie's spoken before about how he wants his not eating animals to come from a genuine place of connection, and going back to eating them is the worst way he can do that. Studies have shown that vegans and vegetarians have more empathy for animals and that we devalue animals in our minds when we eat them. If Charlie wants to increase his connection with animals, he can visit a sanctuary or a slaughterhouse. I'm betting he would have enormous empathy for a cow if he saw her before she walked into a slaughterhouse. Ever since I rescued a chicken from a slaughterhouse, I appreciate chickens so much more. There's something about seeing the fear and suffering in their eyes that makes you understand why eating them is a moral atrocity. Visiting them as sanctuaries after they've been rescued helps you see how beautiful their lives can be when they're not being exploited by humans. I haven't given up on Charlie yet, but it is a shame to see someone use their spiritual journey to justify immoral behavior. Not every insight on psychedelics should be taken as gospel, and I'm disappointed that he's using this trip as an excuse to abuse animals. If the end goal of spirituality is to recognize that we're all one, how does causing part of ourselves to experience hell on earth fit in with that? I personally don't think that it does. If you enjoyed this, hit that like button. If you want to support my work, join my Patreon. Last month, we donated to Animal Liberation Temple, Special thanks to my morally superior patrons, and I'll see you next Friday.